This is Ryan Womack. I am data librarian at Rutgers University Libraries in New Brunswick. This is the first video in a series on R. It is the 2020 version and we are going to focus on the tidyverse and it's called R uh, for data analytics, a tidyverse approach. Now I'm going to go ahead and launch my browser and give you something to look at uh, besides my cat there. Um, we are going to refer to a couple of, of sites. I'm going to uh, give you a little editor window where we can keep track of those. So the first one is libguides.rutgers.edu slash data underscore r. The libguides pages from the libraries are places where the librarians are able to put up various guides and information. Um, this R page uh, is part of our suite of data um, services, and there's some other tabs there that you can have a look at. On this page, uh, this would be one, if you have one starting out point to remember, this would be a page to use because it has all of our workshop information. Um, it's also going to archive the recordings of these sessions, including this one. Um, so you can go back to this page uh, and look for updates, look for recordings. And I'll also mention on the left-hand side that down, down on the left-hand side, there are the classic screencast versions or legacy versions, which are uh, still valid. They're using methods um, that are not tidyverse methods. They are the base R methods. Um, and you may be interested in looking at those as well. Um, the the material for those is still there but we are going to focus on the materials that are available through this github site at my github account github.com slash ryan data slash tidyverse underscore approach and all those major links i'm going to put in the description below the video now if you have if you are comfortable with your R and R Studio installation on your own machine, and you've got a little bit of familiarity with how you've used that a little bit, um, you should actually be good to go and skip the rest of this video and go to the, the second video where we actually start R for data analytics and we, we're going to be using our code examples. This video is intended to introduce you to R from scratch. If you don't have any idea what it's about, you've just heard about it, that it's a good thing to use. Um, so in this video, I'm going to um, kind of talk through a little bit of installation issues and a little bit of um, just generally about R. And to do that, I'm gonna go to this GitHub site. I'm gonna open that up in a new link. and go ahead and maximize this and enlarge it a bit. Um, at this page, this is a, a GitHub site that is gonna contain all of the materials for the these sessions that are coming up. If you are familiar with Git, you'll know what to do with this material, uh, how to get a hold of it. If you're not familiar with Git, we will be having a Git workshop coming up later in the semester. Uh, Git is a system for collaboration and version control um, focused on code but it has a lot of other nice uses um, and it's a good thing to learn um, but you don't need it right now if you if you haven't used that before if you have not used git before and you want to get these files which you'll want to do if you want to follow along with what we're going to be doing in the upcoming series you will click on code this green button and then click download zip and that will download a zip file, which you can unzip and put anywhere on your machine. It'll have all these files in the directory. Now, I will caution you that um, I may be making some slight updates and edits as we go forward. So you uh, you might want to refresh these uh, because as I'm testing out the code, I don't plan to make major changes since last year's version. But when I test it and run it, usually I find little things to tweak. So the R for data analysis file has already been tweaked because that's the one that was just done live. Uh, but others are 
uh, probably going to see some little changes. So if you want to follow exactly along with the video, you'll want to refresh this uh, download before you run any of the upcoming uh, series. Okay, so I'm going to click on this file that says r for data analysismd and that's going to give me a little jumping off uh, page with some links um, that we can, can talk about R from. Uh, MD is a markdown file. Markdown is a simplified um, way of creating a document with headers and links and lists and things like that um, that is natively interpreted when you're in GitHub uh, to produce something like a simple web page like this. We'll also be returning to the topic of markdown documents later in this series when we talk about reproducibility. Okay, but now this is the from scratch basics discussion. Uh, so I'm going to ask and answer the question, what is R? And the official answer is R is a free software environment for st oh, statistical computing and graphics. I just bumped my keyboard there, but it's uh, this one. And the homepage for R is r-project.org. Uh, this is a very um, basic kind of site with just, with just plain HTML and none of that uh, nasty JavaScript and other things. That, so it represents the finest, uh, purest iteration of the web. Not a lot of imagery and things like that. And so this, this site really uh, is very usable. So R is not only free, it is open source. It is um, a system for statistical computing. It's not quite a programming language like Python is. It's not a, quite a full featured programming language, but it certainly is akin to a specialized programming language. They use the term software environment, uh, which I think is the best compromise. It is great for statistical computing because it is actively used by researchers uh, at the cutting edge of the field and in a broad range of disciplines. They are providing their latest statistical methods and tools via R packages. And we will talk further about R packages when we actually get into installing um, the system uh, and running the code. But for right now, let me just talk about if you don't have R at all, you probably want to download it and put it on your own machine. I will talk about a couple of alternatives as well um, to, to doing that. But um, since it is free and open source, there's really no barrier to you just getting your own copy and starting to work with it. So when you click download, what you'll see is this series of sites. These are what are called mirror sites. Each site has an identical copy of the software. They should all be up to date. Um, and it's called the Comprehensive R Archive Network or CRAN. Um, you can pick uh, your favorite university or center that you have some sympathy for off of this list. Or you can simply, if you want something fast, choose the first link on the list that says OCloud, uh, which will redirect you to the fastest uh, server near you. Once you do that, you'll see a page that looks like this. And there are versions for Linux, Mac, and Windows. So let me talk about those in reverse order. Uh, if you have a Windows system, you click on download for Windows. And what you want is this base. Uh, as it says, this is what you want to install R for the first time. The base will give you the latest version. Um, you don't actually have to worry anymore so much about a 32-bit or 64-bit version. Um, almost all newer systems you know, will easily default and handle the 64-bit system. I think the only case where you might want 32-bit in today's world is if you're running on a, you know, some sort of smaller device like a Raspberry Pi or something that you, you need a 
Um, but there is still compatibility with 32-bit um, if you need that. Otherwise, don't worry about that and go with the 64-bit. Uh, you can download it and basically accept the defaults uh, as you go through the, the installation process. I won't uh, try to comment on, on the details there. Uh, I will comment on what these other things are on this page. So base gives you the R language and a, and a basic editing environment uh, uh, for creating R programs, R code. Uh, the contrib and old contrib are actually, I, I really think those are not very useful for the vast majority of people. You will be installing additional packages from directly within R once you have R. And I've never seen the need for these uh, to actually go back and download these separately. Um, however, they are there if it turns out you need them. The R tools, however, you will eventually need it. Uh, R tools has some advanced compiling features and things that you need to build R packages. So as you advance down the road in using some um, more cutting edge packages in R, and also creating your own packages, you will sometimes be asked when you install something, this requires R tools. And unlike almost all the other packages that you can simply install from within R, R tools is a bit different. You'll have to come back here and add it separately for Windows. So if you click on that, it'll show you the latest version to download that you that you need to grab. Um, Okay, that's Windows for Mac. You can click on Download R for Mac, and I clicked on the wrong link, but this is it, the right one. Um, we're up to version 4 right now, 4.0.2, and the versions change relatively frequently. Certainly the, uh, the major jumps from 2 to 3 or 3 to 4 happen a little bit slower, but uh, because R is open source, it's easy to just go and grab the new version whenever you need to. You should be keeping up with changes in R because otherwise eventually you'll have some breakage of packages that don't work. They're not compatible. Um, R likes things to be all relatively current on the system. But it will continue to run and, and you can actually have multiple versions of R running on your system at the same time. That's one of the things that is possible. So if you've got something you worked out for a project and it was all running just fine, you can leave that alone in its directory and install a, a second newer version of R in a different place um, to experiment with new features, you know, if you don't want to tamper with the older one. Okay, so that those are con that's commentary, but installing R for Mac is pretty simple, straightforward. You just grab the latest package file and push it into the the program directory the same way you would in other Mac applications. You'll also see this note that um, you may need to install X quartz um, for some things to um, to run, and you'll. If you don't do that right away, you'll certainly see the the instructions to do so when you try to run something that requires it. So it's not a big deal. You don't have to get a, get it right at the beginning. Um, and the other things here are just older packages, older versions. You typically really don't need to go there. Just grab the latest one, install it, and you're done. Uh, we also have Linux versions and the... Um, what you see on my screen here, this is a Linux system that I'm recording this on. Um, there are Linux versions for the major distributions. I would not recommend for Linux to grab these and install them. For Linux, go to your package manager, however your, your distro handles uh, the, the dis distribution of packages. Look for R there and install the version that's compatible uh, with your distro because otherwise, well, that version is just easy to use. It's already got all the uh, requirements and dependencies worked out. Whereas here you're asking to install the very latest version of R 
on top of a system that might not be the latest version, right? Like I'm running a stable version of Debian that is not the newest version. And I might need to do some tweaks to get the latest version of R running. If you if you want to do that, you know, that that knock yourself out. That's that's great. But you don't have to worry about that if you just use the um, built in uh, appropriate package manager for your distro. So like mine is um, if I go to system, I'll see I have syn the synaptic package manager that I could look for and I won't log in here, but I could look for our material, uh, the, the base R package there. And typically they'll also offer additional, you know, add on packages for R, but you just need the base R package to get started. And on Linux, you the on Mac and Windows, the R installation comes with a built in um, GUI. On Linux, it doesn't. On Linux, you just get your terminal access where you can type capital R and you are into the R system. Um, so this is why we need some kind of editor on top. Um, the Windows installation includes a base code editor. Uh, the Mac installation also includes a basic code editor. But we are going to use RStudio. Uh, why is that? RStudio is super popular. That's one thing. Um, RStudio is also quite powerful. Um, so I'm going back to the web page here. Um, that has the quick links. Um, I skipped over this part that says why R. You can you can check out that blog post yourself, um, and it's a little bit you know R and Python are the major um, major software environments that people are doing data science in today. Although there are there are others as well. Um, it's certainly um, because R is really attuned to statistics, whereas Python is more general computing with statistics added. You could argue that R has um, a, a faster way to do certain kinds of data science. There's nothing wrong with Python, and Python is, is possibly better for some applications as well. Both Python and R are open source, however, and I would emphasize this part that um, if you are writing tools, distributing your findings, um, and you're distributing it via an open source method, anyone can pick that up and use it. Anyone can pick that up, they can read your stuff, they can understand your analysis, and they can build on it. And you can collaborate with others without having to worry about, oh, well, they've gone home <laughs> um, to work for a while and they don't have access to that licensed software there. Um, I'd like to work with, the, with someone who's not at an institution that gives them discounted access to certain things. Um, how do I do that? They, I, they need to spend thousands of dollars to use a commercial program. If I'm using a commercial program, open source gets rid of all those problems and I'm a big open source fan uh, for that and other reasons. Okay, that was a diversion from RStudio. Uh, what is RStudio? Okay, RStudio is not uh, it is not the same as R. Uh, although if you if you come to R simply by using RStudio, uh, it's a little bit blurry the boundary, and that's kind of why I like to talk about this a little bit in in more depth. RStudio is a company that provides products and services for R. So they're for profit, um, but they are a good citizen of the R open source community, and they release a lot of their tools in open source versions. In particular, their R Studio desktop, which if you go under products on their site and go to R Studio, you will see it says the premier IDE integrated development environment for R. And IDE is basically a place where you you edit your code, but it's got a lot of helper features. We're going to see that when we see it in action in the next video. You can go here. You can um, scroll down a bit, click on RStudio Desktop. That's what you'd want to use on an individual computer. Um, there's also a server version, which I'm not going to talk about, uh, but 
it allows you to share access to a single instance like that. And you can click on the open source edition and download the desktop. And then it will um, basically keep clicking the free options. And then you'll get a list of the various software versions. And you, so you can choose Windows, you can choose Mac, you can choose various Linux flavors. Um, you have to be a little careful here because you'll notice that there are like a kind of old and new generation, depending on um, like Red Hat 7 versus Red Hat 8 or Fedora 19 versus Fedora 28 and higher. Um, that's That would mean Fedora 28 and newer, Red Hat 8 and newer. Uh, the same for Ubuntu slash Debian. Um, they changed their approach. And this is a case where you don't want to use your your um, Linux distributions package manager. You won't find these um, on on there, but you want to download it directly from our studio and then do the appropriate installation method for your distribution. Uh, so these are standard, you know, Linux, uh, Debian, or RPM packages. You also can go from source uh, if you if you'd like to do that um, I've never had the need to do that or seen an advantage to do that um, but it is available so this is our studio we're gonna see it in action in the next video um, and I'd also like to emphasize that R is separate from our studio when you install R and then install our studio R Studio is going to recognize the version of R that you have, and it's going to work smoothly with that. R Studio also has a lot of built-in helper prompts that are going to say, like, do you want to install these packages? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? Those work, but I lean on the side of saying, you know, install your packages in R itself uh, rather than letting R Studio do the work. When you need to upgrade R, install it directly and then let our studio recognize the new installation it just eliminates one possible source of um, mistakes in the chain um, so that's a little bit of advice um, but you can actually live happily in the r studio world if you if that's what you'd like to do okay so we have seen r we have seen r studio and we have seen the the sites from which the code for this session will be distributed and i'm also going to talk about the tidyverse but i'm going to save that introduction for the next video because that directly leads into the code that that we will be looking at so this is the end of the introduction or the the general introduction the next video will get into actual using our code for data analytics. Thanks.